and there's always a planning meeting, and there's a data meeting. And I've noticed a lot of times in visiting with different PLCs, we spend a lot of time talking about what we're going to do, and then sometimes we don't spend a lot of time on the data portion and analyzing what's coming in. So these steps are um, steps for analyzing data along the way. There's six of them in total. Any, you could be at any stage at any point, but what we're going to do is, for today, we're only going to focus on the first three, but throughout the whole year, we're going to talk about what each of these phases look like and what it means for us and how we could implement some practices within our PLCs and also within our classrooms that will help us move our students along and actually give us the data that we need. Okay, so let me just explain where we're going to get our information during the course of this year. Right now, we have what we call long-term data. This is data that is looked at once a year, gives you a global view of where your students are. And usually, those data sources come from SAGE. Now, you notice that there's another icon on the side? The state is transitioning this year to a new test. It's called the, uh, the Utah Aspire Plus, which is a combination of the ACT test and our SAGE test that we've had so far. So, we're going to talk about what that is at the end of the year, but we'll, um, when we get to that point, we will look at what the data results that come in from that test of the instruction. Okay, the next data source we're going to look at is our benchmark data. Our benchmark data, sorry, I'm just going to step back here for a second. Our benchmark data is what we call midterm data. This midterm data comes in about every six to eight weeks. And as teachers, and I'm going to tell you, I've been looking at, at information for over a year now, and I can't tell you how many of you, and Dr. Jenner will cover it a little bit, are so close to um, really high scores when it comes to testing. And I seriously believe, whether it's an individual or whether it's a PLC, that if we spend a, some more of our time and effort in looking at this information, we can really make some changes happen and see some really significant growth in this. So in this information, it gives us an at -a ground view of how our students are doing. It's usually information that's housed in School City. So we are actually going to have some training with School City and um, being able to pull the information from there and utilize that as a tool for us as we move forward. Another piece of data, and this is the last one that we will be looking at, is that um, short-term data is for CFAs in between. And again, those are individuals to each PLC. I already talked about that. With data managers, and you will see a version of this coming to um, elective teachers as well, we're going to track progress between assessments. So we're going to start with um, looking at the baseline data and what CFAs look like in between. The idea behind this is that you have the data in front of you, it's on one piece of paper. And you can see how your scores are improving as a PLC. Also individually as teachers, but also as a PLC. And hopefully, collaboratively, you can work together in helping move those grades. And we'll talk about how this tool will be utilized a little more. OK, Dr. Dunn, I'm going to talk about the accountability pieces. <coughs> OK, I know we talk about the data. We look at the data and we say, Data, 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 and you're sitting there probably thinking, I just, I just want to teach and not have to worry so much about all of this data. Um, yes, we want you to teach. Uh, we want you to enjoy what you're doing. We also want to know and identify the kids that need the extra help so that they can be successful. And it becomes scientific to be able to know what are the kids not getting that we need to help them. Because every one of you would say, I want every one of our kids to be successful. And if we don't know if they're being successful or not, then we don't know how to help them be successful or not. So as we look at data, the median growth percentile, and we'll build more upon this as we go. But what is it? It's that, I showed a video, a little segment of it last time. It's identifying these kids and putting them into groups that becomes meaningful so you're comparing apples to apples. So it is no longer, well, I have all the lower end kids. Or uh, somebody has all the honor kids. Every kid needs help no matter what level they're at. If you're a, if you know how to water ski, and you're a pro at water skiing, you need to become a little better to be the number one person in the world. If you've never water skied before, 
you might need more help. But both the water skier who's a pro and the new person who's a water skier, both people can water ski. So we've got to find and identify those things with, and, and compare the kids equally to one another. So we're comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges instead of saying, well, I can't do that. We can do that with medium growth percentile. Here is a, a real example. This is data that you are going to start seeing and we are going to start providing you. This was information that I have on a department that I need to hand out this week. Take a look at it so it makes it a little more, this is on benchmark data, okay? Now, we do this not for the person, not, not for the purpose of pointing fingers. It's for the poor purpose of taking a look and figuring out what am I doing really well? What am I not re doing really well? And sometimes we get scared. We don't want to put out and realize, you know what? I, geez, I, I'm not, I think I'm supposed to do what I'm doing, but I might not be doing it. Here are your bands, no growth. This is for the benchmark for a period of, I think it was uh, a semester. So we have teacher one, two, three, four, five, six. All teachers in the same PLC. We have a great discrepancy here. Teacher six who hit it at 80, teacher five who hit 70. So we're here in the green. Then we have teacher four who's at 62 close, teacher three at 41, teacher two at 35, teacher one at 46. Valid conversation when this paper is presented with names on it. Not to point fingers, but to identify what we're doing. Not to say, well, you've got these kids and I've got these kids. It is part of medium growth percentile. How are we helping these kids? So when you get that and your name is now by that, you know, teacher four right here might be saying, well, you know, let me explain this, end size is the amount of students, and then the school, medium growth percentile, because we're compared to the other schools in the district. I'm not worried about the other schools in the district. I'm worried about our school. I'm worried about what we can do with our kids, and what are we willing to do to take a look at data to make sure that we're willing to have these real conversations. What does that look like? This looks like, well, you know, that's a scary thought if I'm this teacher right here. Well, you know what? I hope, yes, I, I, I think that's good. It, it's a natural thing. We're going to fear and say, well, why am I so much lower? Then we tie this into what are we doing within our PLCs and why are we so far off? Are we this far off? If you're getting it, and this teacher right here is in the same PLC, and this teacher isn't, is this teacher teaching to the core? Is this teacher teaching to the benchmark? Is this teacher, yeah, you know what, I'm a great teacher, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and all that other stuff, it just doesn't apply to me, okay? There is a danger in that, because I think sometimes that might be some of the feeling, saying, you know what, I've done this for many years, and it just doesn't, it doesn't apply. They, we don't know... Nobody else knows what we should be doing. I have the experience. I will tell you that these numbers will tell you more of whether you're preparing students or not. Okay? So again, we have to get comfortable with it. But we have to have that crucial conversation. What does it mean? Here are some numbers over the years. Um, NGP scores that you can take a look at. To start saying, you know, what, what have we done? Have we changed anything? In our, um, in our PLC, have we made things a little different? Were there some things that changed in the test? But ultimately, which way are we trending as we look at some of these things? And this information, again, you as experts, professionals in the classroom, having the opportunity to decide, as a department we're here, as an individual, this is where I'm at. And maybe taking that little bit of humility and say, you know what, I could probably be better to be able to help out our, our PLC or at least to contribute and be on the same page with those who are having success so I can learn and become better. All right, expectations. Let me just go to number three. Use our, well, this is posted often in different places we talk about it. Be active, delivers rigorous and meaningful instruction. Use data and adjust to instruction. Again, as you leave this afternoon, you're going to go, oh my gosh, that was a lot of data stuff. If we don't use it and we practice it differently, the next time we meet, it's just going to be more data stuff. 
I just ask you, I, I ask you as, as colleagues, I ask you as professionals, to, some of you are, are so far ahead into this, it, 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 it makes total sense. Others are starting to try it and do it great. Others are still questioning it. I just ask that we all, where, whatever level we're at, we find where we're at and we continue to build upon that and continue to build and find how we can best help students that why, okay? All right, questions, thoughts, ideas, comments? Let's get out of here. Thank you so much, have a great afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow.